done just going in for another appointment and I actually have to do my injections I'm late for my appointment so I'm doing them in the car or doing it in the car little tip if you're doing injections out and about take two with you always because you never know what might happen to one of them um yeah I'm late for my appointment been slowly falling apart over the week this has been really rough so funny like I said before we really thought that we were you know pros at this it's hard no matter who you are um and this cycle has not gone as expected our doctor wanted to cancel oh Jesus okay that didn't go in Oh boy, those needles are thick. Um, yeah, so our specialist wanted to cancel the cycle, but we are sort of seeing this as, we're calling it our Hail Mary, because we're just like, well, we're here now, let's just finish the cycle. We'll fin get to at least egg, egg retrieval. I don't know if we'll finish it. If something comes of it, great. If it doesn't, then we've learned that breastfeeding doing cycles is just not working for us on any level it's probably suppressing my cycle so I'm not producing enough eggs it's not good for the baby it's not good for me um, so we just won't do it and this is the reason that back before I got pregnant with our first baby that was why we did so many egg retrievals it's so funny you know the only negative messages or negative comments we've ever received online were about the fact that we chose to do so many cycles we got a we got some mess couple of messages probably from the same person <laughs> a couple of messages saying that we didn't really have to do 15 cycles that we chose to do that but this is male factor infertility that sperm is just so precious and this is why we had to do it because it you know because of my age because of all these other factors and I mean I don't care what that person thinks anyway but um this is why we did that. This is why we have embryos in the freezer so that we don't have to do it now because it's just not working now. Our time, our moment was back then. So, all right, I'm very late. So it's raining outside, very much like my mood. So I'm gonna go <laughs> and have my scan and check my bloods most importantly, make sure, see how my luteinizing hormone's going, see if I'm ovulating or about to ovulate because that will decide what happens next. So yeah. Wish me luck. We'll see how it goes. This is our Hail Mary. <laughs> another day, another scan, another dark room. There's one. <laughs> oh man, this part makes me feel crazy. So it's, uh, I mean, it's okay. The follicles have grown at the rate that we need them to. There's two at 18, one at 20. Um, one of them is looking quite septated though, which means it has like a... Um, you know, like a line down the middle, which may mean it doesn't produce a normal egg. So, yeah, we maybe have to adjust our expectations for two eggs rather than three. So, uh, and maybe less, maybe one, maybe zero. At least we know it's only going to be three, two, one, or zero. It's definitely not going to be four <laughs> or seven or twenty. So, you know, just set your expectations. <laughs> You'd think, you'd think after all the bloody things we've done, but it's just, it's, I hope you expect it to be the same, but far out. Another day, another scan. Another day, another we are... scan. <laughs> it's so funny, like, people ask us for advice on how to deal with this, and... I, I do have to say, we're pretty much using everything we, we do talk about, because mm. we, I tell you what. We're... Yeah, lucky we wrote our book, because all oh. of this is in our book. And, and then you've got the added bonus of the fact I can't actually be there for... Mm. Because the of the baby, but also well, because of COVID. Because, because of COVID, all that sort of thing. So yeah. it's the same thing again, but it's just like, oh, far out. So we've got to obviously wait and see what my luteinizing hormone's doing. Yeah, because you had your bloods and a yeah. scan this morning, yeah. The follicles still, to me, and I asked the sonographer, they, they don't look like they're bobulate. Like, they don't look like... Yeah. They look juicy, they look good. Yeah. Um, one of them's definitely septated though. Yeah. 
So I think it's pretty unlikely we're going to get a normal egg out of them. Remember when we got abnormal eggs? I think that's the septation. But again, we have no idea, no idea. where they came from. <laughs> but I think we should adjust our expectation to be two eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So the whole point of this really is to just was to see how, yeah, see how your breastfeeding went, see how the eggs went, see what mm -hmm. we produced. See if, there, see if there was any eggs to see if there's any sperm in the, um, that can be used, but, but I've got to say, man, we've got to be done with this. Yeah, this has been... It's, hard, it's been hard. Yeah, really hard. It's been, yeah, it's, it's been like, like and, and through the night and, and, and transitioning and Addie not transitioning, it's just... Yeah, it's not it's not good for us. And this was the whole reason. I was just talking in a video in the car about how, um, you know, the whole reason we did so many cycles back then. Because I remember I talked about it at the time. I said, I don't want it to impact our babies. Yeah. And yeah. it is impacting her and me and all these other things. But yeah. And also, it looks like the retrieval is going to be Thursday. We have plans on Thursday night, which I'm really disappointed about. So I won't be able to do that. There you go. Mm-mm. It'll be fine. Mm-mm. Well, actually, I'll make it <laughs> I could do it really high on. No. <laughs> no, I won't enjoy it. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. So, yeah, it's just. I, I think we need to be prepared to be pretty disappointed about this cycle, but putting it back into perspective, these, when you're in the middle of it, like these couple of weeks have been just so hard. But when we look back on it in our life, this, will, this is two weeks. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't go well, we go, okay, this was two weeks. And, you know, what's the next best thing to do? Mm -hmm. Another thing from our book, what's the next right choice? I think the next right choice is to ask about the endometrial scratch and make a decision about that. And one of the biggest, I think, maybe the decisions we where we had to really get on the same plane is, is when to let go of a certain thing and actually be able to take that step, next step and move forward. Yeah. Because there is also a question, we could just freeze these eggs, defrost them in two years' time, and defrost the sperm at that point as well. Mm -hmm. right. So there's there's just so many different scenarios. And I think it is really good to have a think about the scenarios in advance, but you have to do it loosely. It's like holding sand. You have to yeah. just do it loosely, have a think about it, so that when the time comes and you have to make a choice and grip on, then you've at least considered the options beforehand because and it happens instead of going me going no that's fucking stupid don't excuse the french don't do it now type thing but the thing is like it is a consideration and it can be a consideration down the line and that's how it has to be floated yeah there's no point in making it black and making it black and white now yeah which it's because it's nothing not, is black and white because until we're in that time Mm. But I like that idea of like, consider it loosely, don't attach yourself yep. to any outcome. Yep. So we know what our kind of spectrum of choices are. Mm -hmm. And then, because the problem is once you get to egg retrieval, once you get to fertilization, it all happens so fast. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to consider yep. all your options. So if you consider them loosely beforehand, mm -hmm. And then when the time comes, you go, okay, so we got this many eggs, this, this happened, this happened, this happened. We knew that these were our three choices in that moment. We've already loosely thought about them. Now it's time to narrow in on one. I think that's a good way to do it. And I think so between you, you and me, specific. because you don't like deciding in advance and I try to decide everything in advance, we kind of meet in the middle and we I, end up... I feel I, it, it only adds to my angst, which I don't like because mm. I just don't get anxious and by by all those considerations I'm like well we're not there so yeah I'm not going to make that decision now which is a good idea and at the same time I would be too overwhelmed to make decisions without having considered some of the mm. like I'm really glad that I asked but that's them. Laura's process too like everything gets verbalized I'm, I'm it's not necessary that she needs so me to fix it yeah, right now you've learned to just make the space and just to, wait I have to because time. In this conversation, I've sat here and go, that is the most ridiculous thing <laughs> Just I've now. ever in my head. What, the idea of me doing, doing cycles in the cycle. future? I'm like, that is stupid. But in two years' time, if... It might make if sense. that has actually happened, then it might yeah. make sense. If so I've had some kind of birth trauma... Going, Laura, and I, that is stupid. It's not... Yeah. It's not it's, it's but a I, it helps me feel better because it makes me go, okay, now's not the time to do cycles. Yes. There may be a time in the future. Yes. 
or we may never need to yes. do cycles again. But yes. I, for me, that helps me let go yes. Yes. of doing cycles yes. now because cycles now are not working for us. Yes. So I need to let that go. And the way yes. I let it go is to go, okay, in the future, that might It took be a bit to pry it from our hands yesterday, though, the idea of, of this being... I just, uh, in the past, path, yeah. in the past, what's worked for us was doing the cycles now yeah. while I was younger. That worked for us yeah. while it was working. <laughs> and it is definitely. And so um, making decisions based on all that prior On our learning. experience. Yeah, yeah, doing the second micro tesi was the right choice back then because it's great. Now we've got embryos in the freezer. Imagine doing this right now with no embryos in the freezer. Mm -hmm. It was the right choice right back then. It's mm -hmm. not the right choice now. Mm -hmm. Doing egg retrievals is not working for us right now. Mm -hmm. It's not, they're not being this successful. One, this one did, even though it's been challenging, the amount of information we've collected from this process is yeah. out of this world. Every time it's a <laughs> data collection mission. We have literally been bashed around the head so many times with the baseball bat in this one. But, I'm but, hurting all the way down here. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's so we are going in full of hope and, and but knowing yeah. that this this has been a challenging cycle. I do think we need to talk about whether we do fertilize. Yeah. Um, I, but think, no, no, but I think it's a, it could be a waste a, a of a straw. Of, yeah. See, this is another thing. See, I don't feel any of those straws are really going to come to much, whereas Laura's heading on to the idea that well, they wouldn't have frozen them if there wasn't something in them. <laughs> that is definitely not the case. <laughs> that is definitely not the case. So, yeah, we just have to decide. And obviously, if yeah, we we're starting that, to pre-decide again. We need to actually. We we've got all these options ahead of us. We're loosely knowing what our choices we're are. Not attaching to any one particular thing. We're just getting Letting roller, the roller roller It's not. It's like the next being in the days. ocean and just getting dumped. And dumped and dumped. You're better and off. You get up, take a breath. But and then there's another yeah. one curling over the top. To but trying to fight it. it, trying to stay instead yeah. of just relaxing into the water, it doesn't. The fighting doesn't work. No. no. And the trying to predict the future and where the next wave's coming from, it just doesn't. You do find yourself asking the question, "Why this is happening to me?" But that is that is really not. I don't ask that, that, is, that. that is not helpful at all. I don't ask that because I'm so used it's to this happening like, to us it's now. Like, it's just like, it's I'm like, of course this happens. We're I forever ex asking how come I was thinking this? today about people who get pregnant naturally. I couldn't even imagine sex leading to a baby anymore. I don't even connect those ideas in my head anymore. Mm. Again, I wish I had known years ago yeah. about my issues. Well, I mean, I'm starting to think I've got issues now too. Oh, you've definitely got I've issues. definitely... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Thanks for listening, guys. It's been rough. We'll get, uh, we'll get my Laura through. This one.